Hey guys, quick video update here with the coil. Um, some more tips. I had to build a 20 watt, 300 ohm resistor chain network. Each resistor is 300, um, 300 ohms, 20 watt in series for a total resistance of 300 times 6, which would be, I believe it's 1.8k of resistance with a 20 watt capability. Um, so anyway, that this ideal resistor value determines how efficient your circuit is from the ZVS. So I'll turn it on. Um, there we go. So it's on, pr producing the most powerful fields I've ever seen from just such a simple coil. Um, I've had people ask me to put a magnetic field detector around it. Um, it has minimal activity around the coil because the coil is mostly dielectric in nature and not so much magnetic it'll occasionally go off but for something that's giving off this much power it should be going nuts like I'm holding the meter in my hand and the lights lit so we're showing that this is like a dielectric nodal point or a standing wave not so much a st yeah it could be a standing wave nodal point it's where all the pulses seem to um, maximize at this six inch point away from the coil. And as you see, the, um, the meter isn't going off at all. And I haven't even maximized this coil as much as I could yet. So some construction tips too when you're building it is to um, if you have it trouble if you have trouble with it oscillating, you might have to stand the coil up on a little stand like I did. Good look inside of it. It's a dead simple coil. It's as tall as it is wide, wound on a two inch diameter PVC pipe coupler, and this coupler is nearly as tall as it is wide. Um, full construction details are listed in the channel description and in my YouTube channel community post page. Dead simple Slayer Exciter circuit. Good look at it for you guys. Tuned up with the correct value capacitors in parallel. Um, and it absolutely needs a 20 picofarad capacitor in parallel with the um, input on the ZVS to get it to oscillate. So if you have trouble getting it to oscillate, don't give up on it because you have to tune it <coughs> with the correct capacitor values. And the range is just phenomenal. And like I said, this coil excels at dumping all of its power into free space. And I'll be selling this one for $299. The uh, price went down a bit as the, the, the uh, design got more refined. So absolutely impressive coil and it gives off nearly no sparks because it's dumping all of its power into free space it's basically a dielectric coil no sparks I can touch this and there's there's no sparks at all it doesn't interfere with sensitive electronics I can get my phone as close as I want put it in it um, the field is phenomenally intense And if I were to put this elevated ball up on a stand, it would behave a lot better. So it's just absolutely crazy. I can sh shut the switch off for it. So it's dead now. I'll switch it back on. So that you appreciate that range. Let you guys see it. And again, it's just it's a dead simple. Slayer Exciter Tesla Coil Circuit. Um, and we, we what we do different is have to inject the correct amount of negative resistance into it with SIDAX, which I'm using, S-I-D-A-C, or you can use a neon bulb, but the neon bulbs get very hot. Um, and again, if you build it, build it exactly the way I did, very high Q coil. It's not a tall, thin, lossy Tesla coil. It's a real Tesla coil that excels at dumping all its power into free space in a field that is ab extra to the device, being at the 6-inch nodal point from it. So you're clearly seeing that.
Probably about a four inch point, actually. It's just absolutely impressive. And you can pull some serious power out of this guy from a resonant uh, receiver coil between an earth ground connection. Oh, and also people wanted to see the efficiency gain when I added and removed the earth ground connection. So this is where your heavy earth ground connection goes. I'll add and remove it and show you the power savings. So, uh, no earth ground, earth ground, no earth ground, earth ground, no earth ground, earth ground. So you're seeing the savings take effect, and the earth grounding it actually improves the wireless power effect, so I'll show you that. Got this bulb lit, and I'll show you how the bulb gets brighter as we save more power when I earth ground it. Because the system is acting like a um, energy pump. I can get the earth ground in the right spot. It's actually not doing better because I have to tune my primary a little more. See if we can demonstrate this. Yeah. So see the effect now? Daylight is kind of drowning out the effect. I'm going to probably have to shut my shades, but um, the effect is occurring and daylight is kind of drowning it out. But earth grounding does absolutely improve the efficiency and wireless power output. I wonder if I can ground this while holding it and show you. Yeah, see? Now you can clearly see the effect. can clearly see the improvement effect. Earth grounding it improves the efficiency and the wireless power output simultaneously. So it basically acts like a negative resistant charge pumping Tesla coil that dumps all of its power as a dielectric field into free space and you're seeing that. And I'll turn it up a little bit in this video to really show you what it can do. And, um, again, I need the ideal resistor value here to get it operating a little bit better. And this proper resistor value really makes the coil come alive. And that is just crazy. And also, too, when you set this up, give it a lot of free space. Um, the coil has a very high Q field. needs a lot of room to activate and it has a pulsed output now as those side acts fire and take over so that's what you really want a very abrupt high power pulsed output at minimal input power um, you basically want the coil to operate in a mode that is virtually non-magnetic you want it to operate longitude, longitudinal dielectrically, not electromagnetically. And we can actually hear a small ticking as the coil fires. And um, it can light up big tubes, we'll hold them. Magnetic field detector around the light again, nothing. Because it's a dielectric pulse, not so much a magnetic. Um, electromagnetic induction effect um, so I'm holding this magnetic field detector right on the light and there's nothing it'll occasionally beep but it's not like going off and spazzing out like it should so People wanted to see that. I figured I'd show you guys. So. Can also light up big fluorescent tubes, no problem. And those pulses just contain so much power in them for such a brief amount of time. And the negative resistance effect tries to cancel out the current draw, too, when that occurs. 
and it's just crazy. See if we can lean this up here and get both going at the same time. And the way you would properly use that charge is build a receiving apparatus with a uh, DC output that has the correct uh, smoothing capacitor on it to store your power and then use it. So, those fluorescents are lit in a pulsed fashion. We still have impressive wireless power output to the point where I've had these little bulbs blow on random connections here. Um, you can clearly see the radiant energy pulsing effect. I don't want to blow this bulb. And this is being lit just from my metal work table that sits here. So, answering more questions about the Tesla coil. The main goal behind it and the challenge in the community is to build a Tesla coil that's as power efficient as possible, operating exactly under Nikola Tesla's principles of longitudinal dielectric induction and making sure the coil is not operating electromagnetically and while it operates you want to inject the correct amount of negative resistance into it to cancel out as much power draw in the device as possible um, and the field above this thing excels at going up into free space so figured I'd show that uh, I'll switch it off you can actually hear the circuit ticking as it's firing from the side axe. Hopefully you can hear that ticking. And just for the hell of it, I'll put this um, receiver coil here, hook up a earth ground connection and try and run a load. Or a light bulb. Another thing too is if you ground this coil, sometimes it'll improve efficiency, which is interesting. So I have to find where my light bulb went, which I'm not seeing. I like to film everything kind of on the fly, but oh, I found it. Let's see if this lights up. Nope, I need a smaller bulb. I don't know where that went, but it did light up before. Um, so again, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you everyone for watching. I'll be selling these guys if you want to buy it. Um, you can contact my email in the, in the description. They'll be selling for 300 bucks a pop. Uh, free shipping if you live in the USA. Other than that, you'd have to wait a bit and pay for shipping if you're outside the USA. So, Oh, and I'll turn it on too. So... It's on again, and I'll show that there's no interference when I get my phone close to it at all. And again, there's virtually no sparking that comes off the coil. Virtually none. Because this coil is trying to behave as the opposite of loss, being pure energy gain in free space. So... Thank you, everyone. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, join the Patreon. And, yeah, we'll see you around.